beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome aboard the new Normandy, Commander. I've been looking over the dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus, a Salarian professor on Omega. We know the Collectors use some type of advanced technology to immobilize their victims. We'll need him to develop a countermeasure to protect us. You still don't get it, do you? You're not in charge of this mission. I am. Operative Lawson makes a valid point, Shepard. Without the Professor, any encounter with the Collectors would result in failure. Who are you? I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer Edie. to me as Edie. It's good to see you, Edie. I mean, I know I know it's probably just me, but I liked this version of Edie better than the ME3 sex bot version of Edie. I don't know. I mean, this is just a... I just liked her, that's all. I like her like this. But anyhow, I'm sure many people like the sex bot version, but she's very helpful. All right, anyhow, let's continue. Shut that thing down. I don't want it on my ship. Have I offended? Shepard spent a great deal of time fighting rogue AI. Geth, mostly. Plus that incident with the Alliance's Hannibal system on Luna. Your distrust is logical, Shepard unlike the irrational mistrust of most humans. However, I am no threat to you or anyone else. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. Now that we've established who's in charge, let's move on to these dossiers. Final preparations for takeoff are complete, Commander. When you're ready to go, just pick a destination from the galaxy map and the CIC and I'll plot a course. Jacob and I should return to our posts. Come find us if you have any questions. Soldier. All right, our galaxy map. Right where we remember it. And our private terminal, and we can use that to get status updates on our squad. The armory, select weapons for your squad. Elevator. Use the elevator to access the Normandy's other decks, and I believe there are four in this version of the Normandy, which is much larger than the original. And our captain's quarters. Go to your personal cabin to customize your appearance. The tech lab. Acquire the professor to research upgrades for your squad's equipment. Okay, and we've got some more... I don't know what you call these things. Updates, I guess. That's what we're going to call them. And, and we've got four Renegade for talking back to Miranda. Okay. Um, I guess let, let's introduce ourselves Welcome to aboard. some of the crew. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say... 
It's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. Uh-oh. This is Renegade Shepard. I handle my own business. I understand. I won't bother you unless it's important. Anything else, Commander? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. Hmm. Does Cerberus hate aliens? It sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus' ideals. Mm -mm. You're fooling yourself if you believe Cerberus is noble. I'm sorry you feel that way. I hope time will change your mind. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, yeah, let's do some further investigation. Yeah, what, what do you do? What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. You make sure the crew's mental health is sound? Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. Oh, man. I really like Kelly, so I'm not gonna do the dismissive uh, response. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Well, maybe a little bit dismissive. Let's keep this professional, Yeoman. Yes, sir. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Yes, Commander. Ooh, we got two Renegade. All right, um... Wow, it's been a while. Does the, do these doors still work? Oh, okay. This is the armory. Okay. This used to go downstairs to the lower deck of the Normandy. Tech labs. These are closed off until we get Morden Solus. And here's our conference room. What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. Oh, In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network. Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state no matter the distance between them. If we alter the state of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. And I think the reason I like this version of Edie is because you can use your imagination to, you know, just think about what she looks like, what that, that charming, beautiful voice, you know, who, who would that belong to? And that's why I just I just like this version. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm you know, I'm probably different than most, but it's just something about this version. Let's go. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. All right. We'll say hello to a few other people in the crew, but you can see he's he's not on the side of Cerberus. He's chosen to Joker wear this like to outfit Joker all right well let's go see what Joker wants but I really love this Normandy I mean it's bigger it's brighter Joker 
Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby. Better than new. It fits me like a glove. And leather seats. Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. I don't trust them. We still need to move ahead, but it's all too convenient. Maybe you're right. I guess it's hard to argue when they install an AI to spy on us. We're staying though, right? I mean, this seat is real leather. Good to see you're keeping it all in perspective, Joker. Uh, leather? <laughs> Yeah, those are the important things. Um, oh, do we get points for examining stuff? Oh, we do, or at least some sort of update. I still got some lateral drift. The old Normandy never had that. Well, fix it. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, here's something else. Examine these controls. The haptic adaptive interface. I'm sure all of you futurists love haptic controls. Alright, we're not going to worry about our terminal just yet. So what levels do we have? Yes, there are four levels now aboard the Normandy. We will start at the bottom. Start it at the bottom. Now we're here. Okay. Oh, let's use the monitoring station. Look, the UT-47 Kodiak drop shuttle. Nice. What are these, the men's room? Nope, sorry. Wrong floor. Ah, oh, here are our engineers. Engineer Daniels. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. I didn't hear an officer on deck. I run this ship military. Do you two think this is all a joke? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Won't happen again, sir. At ease. Who are you? I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. Kenneth, you're complaining. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there's an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected. It's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Alright. Alright, we'll talk with them later about uh, Cerberus and whatnot. Carry on. Will do, Commander. But this will give us... A new assignment, a new task to find these FDA couplings. Uh oh, people. Uh oh, do you know what is down this corridor? Yes. You guessed it. The Tantalus Drive. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it is so good to be back. Look at that. Wow. All right, come on, let's go. Oh, my. All right, so we don't need to go down there because that's where a guest will be staying at some point. Okay, I don't need to talk to Edie. All right, where's the elevator? Thank you. Let's go to the crew deck. Deck three. Okay, crew quarters. All oh, right. she's a cutie. How Hello, old? crew. Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Wow, well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh. Uh, All right. Uh, 
right, this is the women's room. It's nice that they have restrooms on board. Didn't have that in the original Mass Effect. Oh, this is the men's room. Okay, and these are locked. I guess this this is where we were going to have additional guests. Oh, the mess hall. I remember this. Chef surprise again. Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. That'd be real nice, Mr. Gardner. This used to be Caden's area. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel. You did humanity proud that day. Miss Sergeant Rupert Gardner here. How can I be of service? You have everything you need. I make do. But have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Oh, shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those namby pambies on the Citadel. Anything else you'd like to talk about? All right, we will come back to him later. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. But we've got another quest. We need to find ingredients for his cooking. Wait a minute. Who is that? No, it can't be. Dr. Chakwas? Commander Shepard. I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. Nice to see a familiar face, Doctor. I feel the same. I wish more of the original crew could be here. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Do mm. you have everything you need? I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres ice brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. Okay, I do want to talk with her, though. In more depth. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Skillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. Let's ask her about Cerberus. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. You gotta love Dr. Chakwas. And then we'll ask her about leaving the Alliance. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center. A very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. All right, I think we've covered everything. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. All right, find the brandy. All right, none of this stuff is available. I, I want to fix his face. I guess I'm not going to be able to do that until I get Morden. Okay. Let's go talk with Miranda. Commander, what can I do for you? You have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. 
Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to know? I'm gonna ask about the elusive man. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. Yeah, what makes you think so? How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions. Even from brief encounters. He's no saint, and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. Um... Yeah, I, I want to know, what is Cerberus? Are you military, or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific. But we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your accident were mostly part of our military division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. I wouldn't call that an accident. It was an assassination attempt. Okay, let's talk about Cerberus goals. I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the special tasks group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. Hmm. That's interesting. And who is in charge? But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. Where do they get their resources? What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment. And a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. Of course not. Now let's talk about you. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Well, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. You're genetically modified? What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly, and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy, and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. Mm, yeah, perfect, huh? Sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe. But I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects a lot from someone with my... abilities. Hmm. Uh... yeah, I'm gonna go with the cockiness. You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. No point in hiding from it. It's the reason I'm trusted to oversee the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes. And it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. All right, I think that'll be enough for now. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. Well, she's certainly, uh... Like, turning over a new leaf. Def definitely uh, more open to talking and sharing. Even though she's in... Commander Shepard's quarters, but he, he's got some new ones. I think uh, some bigger and better ones. All right. We will go up to the captain's cabin. Nice. Look at this. 
Oh, that's Edie again. All right, the famous aquarium here. I will need to get some fish at some point to put in there. And here's where we can customize our armor and our gear and whatnot. Oh, we can have some music here. Oh, yeah. And amazingly enough, there is a bathroom here. I tell you, they thought of everything. We have our private terminal. A picture of our love interest, Liara. And a medal of honor. Okay. All right, let's return to the CIC. Now, we were in the armory, and I didn't see Jacob. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, he's hiding back here. All right, let's talk with him. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. Hmm. Yeah, bringing you was not my choice. You're here because you're Cerberus. Don't expect special treatment. Understood. But not everyone in the group is hardline. I'm an employee because I believe in their current direction. Doesn't mean I don't have concerns about their past actions. Or some of yours. You watch me, I'll watch you. That suit you? Hmm. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. If you follow orders and keep to yourself, we'll have no problems. Fair enough, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. All right, soldier. Ooh, we got more Renegade, all right. So, I think I'm going to take back what I said about the way we uh, leveled up Shepard here. Uh, giving him Bastion, giving him the full, uh, I don't know what you call it. But, giving him this, you see the Paragon Renegade plus 100%. So, I can get my Renegade score, you know, up pretty quickly. Uh, by having this at the very beginning of the game. Plus, having 20% health and 15% power duration and minus 20% recharge time is nothing to uh, slouch at. Hold on. Oh, we do have two points. Okay. Um. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just leave that like this for now. Okay. We are done chatting with the crew. It is time Commander, to advance the story. At your private terminal. I believe it's from Admiral Anderson. All right, let me see what Admiral Anderson wants. Uh, unread messages, is this it? Okay, from Admiral Anderson. On the off chance that the rumors are true and you're actually alive, I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the past two years. You put us on top and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. All right, mark that as red. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff here. A deal struck with Zaid Masani from the Elusive Man. We've reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems and is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You'll find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. 
Don't worry about his fee. I've taken care of that personally. Okay, lost contact with the survey ship. Oh, this is the Project Firewalker. Oh, boy. The MSV Rosalie, a survey ship with Cerberus connections, has gone missing. Maybe not. I can't. This might be something else. Anyway. No, this is it. The survey team was field testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planetside Exploration Rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Case and Dr. Robert Oloy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship, her survey team, and the doctors. The MSV Rosalie was last seen near the planet Ziona, Alesta, Is Ismar Frontier. Okay. Normandy crash site located. From Admiral Hackett, our scans in the Amida system have turned up something we thought you might s that you should see the final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. We thought this news might be important to you, but we also have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like you to honor the Normandy with a monument to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to walk on the site. There are still 20 crew members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any signs of those lost crewmen, we'll ask that you report to the Alliance so that the, the heroes' families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. Okay, Cerberus Assault Armor. Our armor technicians heard you were back in action and insisted that you should be appropriately equipped. They put together a package that I had delivered to the Normandy and you'll find it in your personal quarters. Fortunately, we know your size. Terminus armor. Our armor technicians found a high performance suit for you that was manufactured in the Terminus systems. That is to say, it isn't exactly legal in Citadel sp space. It is. It has been delivered to your quarters so you can try it on. Hope you like the color. Umbra Visor. I've had a night vision device <laughs> delivered to the Normandy. The techs say that it helps put biotic and omni tool attacks on target. Oh, nice. And rather than listen to their explanation of how, I just sent it your way. It will be in your quarters. Recon Hood. It occurred to our armor technicians that you may not want to show your face everywhere you go. They sent by a hood that Cerberus issues to its covert operatives. It has additional microframe functions that you may like. The hood is in your quarters. Sentry Interface Visor. Our software experts looked over your loadout telemetry and they had a recommendation. A visor with onboard processors that manages your armored shield strength. I've sent the visor to the Normandy and it will be in your quarters. Inferno armor. Oh my goodness, we'll be at this for quite some time. Miranda recommended that we send you our Inferno armor. It has been well received by our squad leaders in The Verge. So I'm passing a suit along to you. It should be aboard the Normandy by now. Check your quarters when you got a free moment. The Incisor Sniper Rifle. Miranda was reviewing your weapon's auto-recorded telemetry, particularly the hit-to-kill ratio. Being the busybody that she is, she sent a request for additional firepower. The text thinks something long-range and anti-shield would be useful, so we've issued you an incisor sniper rifle. It will be put in the Normandy's armory, put through its paces, and let put it through its paces and let us know what you think. Overlord. <laughs> One of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge the operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet 
Wow, AT Typhon system in the Phoenix massing cluster. Please use care in this matter. Arc projector. And I'm just wondering if I don't read these, will I not unlock these things? Arc projector is pretty cool, actually. We recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts in the Skillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to chase anything down. Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against a Geth scouting party and credited their success to a new advanced electrical d attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. The weapon is called an arc projector. I sent it to the Normandy's armory so you can examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's gone through plenty of tests and indicate it overloads kinetic barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well. But laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works. Now we want to see what it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. Alright, I think we're actually getting near the end. Rendezvous with Kasumi Goto. At great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief, Kasumi Goto, and convinced her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her, and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequaled at stealth and infiltration, and her skills will prove invaluable in your mission. Travel to the Zakira Ward on the Citadel. There you will find a special ad terminal that differs from the usual. Input the password, silence is golden, to begin the rendezvous. Oh my goodness. The Matok Heavy Rifle. Miranda has been working with Edie on crunching battle telemetry numbers, and Edie had an interesting thought. She suggested that we may be overlooking older proven technologies in an effort to provide you with the state of the art. Normally, I wouldn't give much credence to the idea, but when an AI criticizes you for loving high tech, it gives one pause to consider. With that in mind, I delivered a few heavy rifles, the Maddox to the Normandy, They've been modified for thermal clips, but the rest of the rifles should be the old reliable gun that colonist militias have been using for decades. Good hunting. This is the best gun in the game. The Geth Plasma Shotgun. We saw Jacob with this earlier. Um, the only thing I'm going to say that I'm glad, first of all, that we got the game in the very first mission, and the plus to the Geth Plasma Shotgun is its unparalleled range. This is far better than any shotgun as far as range goes that, that you could wield. So I'm glad to see Jacob with that. Capacitor Helmet. By the time you read this, our technicians will have delivered a capacitor helmet to your armor locker. It will step up your shield recharging technologies. Use it in good health. The Phalanx Heavy Pistol. We've seen that already. Wilson had one on that Cerberus station. And we're just going to, you know, go on ahead. Archon Visor. Our technicians just made a handoff to your crew. A visor and a bit of software called the Archon System. It manages processing power for biotic amplifiers and omni tools. Or, more correctly, allows you to do the managing. It's now in the armor locker. That might be something to uh, look into. Okay, uh, I was trying to look at the Kestrel armor. Kestrel armor. All right, our technicians have had a lively debate about the Kestrel armor system. The suit is supposed to be effective on its own merits, but the technicians felt its shield algorithms were best 
exploited piecemeal and custom arrangements by combining it with other armors. I've shipped a Kestrel suit to the Normandy. It has modular programming so that you can mix and match parts as you wish. Okay, we're done. All right, so we've got a couple of missions from going through all of these messages here. Just let that play out. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end this episode. And in our next episode, we are going to go somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe Omega, but we'll see. We'll just go, you know, wherever the flow takes us. But thank you all for watching. This is Hill, and I'm out.